multiply y star times x, if you will. Okay, so let me then provide kind of an example for both QAM and, and PAM of this type of baseband equivalent analysis. Let me start with the QAM. And suppose I had actually 16 QAM going into a channel that looked, let me just draw what its Fourier transform might look like. Then if it was a nice channel that didn't have any distortion, then basically if I look at positive frequencies, what should happen between f sub c minus 1 over 2t and f sub c plus 1 over 2t is I should get a nice flat channel. If there's no gain, then that would be 1. And this is essentially uh, the Fourier transform of the channel impulse response. So we could write here uh, h of omega is what this looks like. And I would have noise with power spectral density n naught over 2, real signals producing an output y of t. And my two basis functions for QAM, phi 1 of t, is equal to 1 over square root of t times sinc, let's say, of t over t, times square root of 2 cosine of omega ct. And phi 2 is the same thing except with a sine of omega ct here. Now, what would happen, because this channel is perfect, Okay, I can slide it down to baseband. It's introducing no distortion over a band of interest. And you'll notice I chose the sync function here, which is also at baseband flat and has amplitude 1. So what would happen is basically I get 1 times 1. In fact, I got 1 over square root of t here, so I get 1 times that. But I would reproduce the same function at the output of the channel. There would be no distortion for that particular basis function in this channel. And there would be no distortion for the second basis function either. They both are passing through this channel, which has perfect gain 1 and no phase distortion about the carrier frequency. So I did add noise to that, n not over 2 per dimension, and I could proceed with a complex channel, which essentially would amount to y of t bb tilde passing through 1 over square root of t sinc, and then here we'd have t minus t over t, and sampling at all the symbol message instance, and I would have some y vector here. We can call it yk if we want to index it with time. And that passes through a channel like this. Now, if this is not perfect around the carrier frequency, I'm going to get some distortion. But if it is perfect as shown, then from chapter one, we would have known how to analyze the system. We would have had P sub E is less than or equal to 3.25. Remember, that's the number of nearest neighbors for the 16 QAM constellation. Q of D min over 2 sigma, which for 16 QAM, works out to be 3 over 15 times the signal-to-noise ratio. And that's what chapter 1 would have told us to do for this particular channel. Chapter 2, I should write chapter 1 here. Chapter 2, nothing changes. Exactly the same. Now, if the channel were not perfect in passing a signal, then I'd have to recompute the d-min at this point but it would still proceed along the same lines as chapter 1. I just look at what happens to the constellation points at this point in the diagram here, okay, which is equivalent to the baseband system that, that we found. We do the right demodulator. 
I look at this signal in complex form, then I can remove the square root of twos in the transmitter and basically just get the X1 and X2, look at the filtering that happens in the channel, how did that change the constellation, and come up with a, an analysis of the actual probability of error, what would change would most likely be that argument to the Q function, because the points would, would not be spaced nice and equally any longer. For PAM, let's so suppose I had 2B1Q, or 4 PAM transmission, then I'd have all real signals, and the equivalent type of system would be X of T going through a channel, H of omega, which was already at baseband, because it's a PAM system, 1 to 2T, and it has amplitude 1, has noise N of T, which has N naught over 2 per dimension, and that's Y of T, everything all real. Okay. And the probability of error for this system, PE bar, is actually equal to 1.625. That was the number of nearest neighbors divided by two, uh, by, divided, sorry, the average number of nearest neighbors for this system. And again, it's uh, square root 3 over 15 times the signal to noise ratio. And I think I've got this, sorry. That's not the right number of nearest neighbors. It's uh, one and a half for the PAM system. Now, what's going to happen is you can see by looking across these two systems, because of the normalization that I've introduced in the scaling demodulator and complex analysis, that basically this system, the PAM sy system, is essentially one dimension of a system like this. If the symbol rate were the same in both of these systems, we would get exactly the same analysis, and we're going to be able to proceed with complex signals. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> with that said, now what we can proceed to do is begin to consider uh, complex signals, complex interference. All we have to know is about this demodulator trick, okay, and everything falls under the same category. Now what we're going to do on Thursday is begin Chapter 3 on inner symbol interference, what I'd like to do um, here at the end of the lecture for today is just talk about um, some other signaling techniques that I glossed over quickly in the last few minutes, which you shouldn't have too much trouble actually understanding at this point, but we didn't really, um, we didn't really cover them uh, real closely. In particular, this is what's called phase shift keying, or PSK. In effect, it is QAM signals, but the constellation is not the square, it's not the cross, but in fact, it's all points equally spaced on a circle. And you'll typically see a number out in front of PSKM, the number of messages. What I've drawn here would be 8 PSK. This type of system has basis functions. Phi 1 of t is equal to, again, we'd have a, a some square root of 2 phi of t times cosine mega ct. And we'd have phi 2 of t square root of 2 phi of t times sine of mega ct. You just have kind of a weird looking constellation. The d min for such a constellation works out in general to be 2 times square root of ex times sine of pi over m. ex is basically the squared radius of the circle for PSK. Everything that we just talked about for complex analysis will also apply to signals like this, except getting the complex input to the channel is going to be a little more challenging. It's not just points on a rectangular grid like plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. You have to use some, some geometry to basically get the points on the circle, if you will. But all of the analysis, if I were to pass this through a channel, complex, it would still apply 
to this system. In fact, you can actually find the probability of error uh, for this system always less than 2, the number of nearest neighbors, times square, Q times the square root of 2 times the signal to noise ratio times sine of pi over M is the, uh, the performance of the system. Now, what happens is you get lots of points in the constellation around the circle. This is not particularly interesting from, from a constellation design. Let's suppose I do 16. Well, really it really gets kind of ugly here. You can see all the points are, are basically getting too close together uh, around, around the circle to have 16 points. And the D min is dropping pretty rapidly. OK, the sign here of a small angle is going to 0. Why would such constellations be used in transmission? Well, they're used in a few places. One of the places is satellite transmission. If you actually have a direct broadcast satellite uh, system, the older ones use four-point PSK. The newer ones are using eight-point PSK. This particular type of transmission is very efficient if you have a nonlinear transmitter that can only transmit at one power level very nicely. But if you try to increase the power level or decrease the power level, it doesn't work as well. Nonlinear amplifiers of that type can be very, very efficient in terms of their use of battery power. And so on satellites, where the only power available is basically bat battery power, that becomes paramount in terms of the design of the constellation. It's not efficient in terms of actual transmit power, but in terms of the actual consumed power from a battery, this is very important. You will sometimes see this used in, in very simple computer uh, networks that, that were intended for laptops. That happened in the early days of, uh, of Wi-Fi transmission, but it's no longer PSK. And, uh, there they actually use QAM in, in that case also, even though that they're, they're depending on battery power uh, also. But nonetheless, even with PSK, which is less used than some of the other types of transmission methods, is still a very common uh, method. It turns out it also falls into this complex analysis, so we could apply it also to PSK uh, systems. So with that, we'll let everybody go. Take a look at, at Chapter 2, and then we were uh, finishing that up, and we're going to get into Chapter 3, the very first section on intersymbol interference in Thursday's lecture.